There are a couple of approaches for deciding which security to buy and when to buy it. Okay? One is fundamental analysis and one is technical analysis. Now, fundamental analysis examines the economic fundamentals of a business. And so a lot of the analysis uh, conducted is financial statement analysis where you're going to examine the liquidity, the leverage, the profitability, and the efficiency of the company. You may also look into some economic analysis. How fast is the economy growing? Um, demographic analysis can be very valuable because demographics don't change quickly. Okay? They're, right now, the number of baby boomers starting to retire, the number of baby boomers who will be retired in the near future is going to be a very large portion of the population. So certainly there are businesses that cater to older individuals will benefit from that. Uh, you can also do industry analysis and trying to determine industry profitability. What um, part of the industry life cycle is the industry in? Is it in the early stages or is it a mature industry? You can use something like Michael Porter's Five Forces model to determine industry profitability. Um, other types of analysis, you can analyze the business strategy, uh, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats is an analysis that can be conducted on a firm. You can also use Porter's competitive strategy analysis where you look to see whether the firm is a cost leader or a differentiator and whether they are a uh, target a broad market, that is try to sell to everybody, or they're focused on a specific segment of the market. Uh, you may also look at earnings growth. Okay, How fast are earnings growing and how fast can they continue to grow at this rate? And ultimately your goal is to determine the valuation of the firm after conducting this analysis. And the goal of the fun of fundamental analysis is essentially to determine the intrinsic value of the company and then to compare this value to the market price. If the intrinsic value is greater than the market price, then that's clearly a buy signal. That is, you think it's worth $100, it's only selling for $75, it's a good deal. Um, on the other hand, if you think the intrinsic value is less than the market price, that is, you think it's only worth $50 and it's selling for $75, then if you own it, it's probably a good time to sell it. And if you don't own it, you probably don't want to buy it. And in fact, if you're a bit more aggressive as an investor, you might actually want to short sell the stock. So this can be a valuable tool for doing the analysis. Now the other approach is technical analysis. And technical analysis assumes that patterns exist in security prices and that those patterns will persist. Okay? There may be price patterns, there may be uh, patterns in the volume of trades, we may be looking at who's buying or who is selling. Okay? For example, if, if the average small, if small investors are buying, there's this assumption that small investors are uninformed and usually buying at the wrong time and selling at the wrong time, you might choose to do the opposite. Or you might see that insiders or um, other types of uh, people who have more knowledge of the market, for, at, for example, uh, market specialists on the exchanges are shorting more than usual, then that may be a signal whether to buy or sell. Now, academics don't really like technical analysis because what they understand is that, you know, just because there's a pattern in stock prices doesn't necessarily mean that movements aren't random. You know, for example, you can flip a coin. You can flip a fair coin, and we know there's a 50% chance of a head coming up and a 50% chance of a tail coming up. But you wouldn't expect to flip heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, etc. You might flip four heads in a row, then you might flip two tails, then you might flip two heads, then you might flip uh, six tails in a row. Now if you did this in a large enough sample, 
for example, if you flipped it a thousand times, you'd probably be pretty close to having 500 heads and 500 tails. And if you flipped it a million times, you'd be, again, pretty close to 50-50. But in little short, sh short runs, you may flip a number of heads in a row and a number of tails. So just because there's a pattern doesn't mean that that pattern isn't something that's random. Okay? Technical analysts oftentimes are people who sometimes I, I've read stories where they actually like to lock themselves in a room and close the curtains. They don't actually want anything to influence them. They just want to look at the charts and determine is the price going to go up or is the price going to go down. And they'll look at things like resistance levels. Okay, If the price goes above some resistance level, well, it's breaking out. It's going to continue to go up. If it falls below some support level, it's going to continue to fall, and that's a sell signal. Now, you know, even though stock prices may be random, there may be reasons why technical analysis will work. And this fits into sort of the notion of the behavioral finance that's becoming quite popular now. Uh, human beings oftentimes exhibit a herd mentality. Okay? They like to follow what everyone else is doing. Okay, let's be honest. When everyone else is buying stocks and they're making money, right? Your neighbor is bragging to you about how much money he made when he bought Apple stock or Microsoft stock. You don't really want to be left behind. So you may just jump in and buy just because everybody else is buying. And when when um, everyone else is selling, you don't want to be the fool who's sitting there holding on to the stocks, so you bail out too. So oftentimes we see that. We saw that with some of these bubbles we've had, the tech bubble back in the late 90s and early 2000, when everybody bought these internet stocks. They had no idea what these things would be valued at, but people bought them anyhow. They jumped in and they just kept buying and buying and buying. So that can be a real problem. Okay, How can we use fundamental and technical analysis? Well, there are two approaches. And the two approaches are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Okay, Fundamental analysis is really ideally suited to determining the long-run viability of a company. Think about it. It's competitive positioning, where in the industry life cycle the industry, uh, um, the company's industry is in. You know, what's their profitability? What's their liquidity? In the short run, you can be not very profitable and perhaps have your stock go up because people are very excited about the potential of your company. But in the long run, your company actually has to make money. Okay, so, um, you know, fundamental analysis is really where you want to be if you're a long-term investor. But technical analysis might still be valuable even if you really believe in fundamental analysis in terms of identifying the best time to buy the security. If you happen to see some pattern where the stock falls, that may be a good opportunity, a good buying opportunity. So technical analysis is not necessarily useless even if you believe in fundamental analysis. In fact, there are a lot of analysts that believe you use fundamental analysis to really determine the strength of the company, and then you use technical analysis to help you determine the best time to buy the stock.